Okay, I'll chase that down. Uh, sorry, hey. <laughs> Ooh, that's much different. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, as previous speakers have said, the, the Redfish profile provides a, uh, a method for uh, an implementation, uh, or to specify an implementation level, uh, since Redfish has, uh, I don't know what, how probably a 2,000 properties in it now, uh, the, the schema, uh, the, the schema list we made has got a quite a quite an extensive list of uh, of stuff now, uh, but uh, the common question we get uh, from a lot of customers and a lot of people implementing uh, is, well, you know, what what version of Redfish do you support, or what should I implement? And the first question is a tough one to answer because I can I can tell you what version of the specification my implementation supports. But that's really not what your question is. Uh, that that what version do you support is really a question about well, what did you implement? What is what can I what information can I get from the product? Uh, and because most properties are not required, everything almost everything is optional uh, in, from a from a spec standpoint. Uh, it doesn't really tell you uh, the version number doesn't mean that you have a rich implementation. Uh, so that's what the profile is intended to do, is to give a checklist to say, here are the things that I expect to be in the implementation at, at certain levels of, of required or mandatory uh, you know, uh, uh, support, uh, so that we can all have that conversation to say, this is, this is the stuff that I support. So it's a, it's a common ground standpoint of, of you know, what's available in the spec versus what's available in the implementation. Now, the... Uh, and as previous speakers have said, the, the, the way that these profiles are constructed uh, and the way that OCP is, is using this is to create a baseline profile. And so that is a, uh, a level that just describes uh, what it takes to be a manageable device. Uh, so it's really almost all the housekeeping functions. You have to have user support. Uh, you, know, you need to have an eventing service, uh, you know, these kinds of things. And so those, those very basic tasks that would apply to any managed device. Uh, and then it's up to the individual OCP project groups to then create a profile that sits on top of that baseline to say, okay, for a computer system or for a, a rack manager or for a you know, storage component or, or whatever, <clears throat> what are the pieces of Redfish that are specific to that class of device uh, that need to be implemented? And so the, the profile document then you know, is, is what that checklist is. Uh, and then we, by publishing that and, and converting that into human readable forms, then basically, you know, customers, software developers, and implementers all <clears throat> understand what that target is that they should be uh, shooting for in terms of implementation. So the profile document itself is is a machine readable JSON document. So it's it's uh, it's it, we, we we like to say it's mostly human readable. It's readable by you know by programmers. And you know, it, with a little bit of uh, of trial and error, you can get it. Uh, you know, even even a novice uh, programmer or uh, <clears throat> anyone at least familiar with computer science can can read and, and modify and and create one of these profile documents. Um, the uh, but it's it, it is just a JSON document, and so that's one of the advantages to this is that you can use JSON tools to help either construct it or to validate it. The, uh, the layout of the document was made so that it looks very much like uh, a, a structure that a human would expect, uh, and also it kind of matches what you would find if you were using a browser or a, a simple REST tool to, uh, to look at the Redfish resources. So it's broken down by individual resources and then the individual properties underneath that, and then uh, the organization kind of drills down into each property to give the, the individual requirements, and I'll show those in detail. So yeah, the, the namings and stuff is all based on this is a human thing. This is not something we transmit over the wire. So we didn't give any, uh, you know, there was no concern about you know trying to make this uh, uh, you know short names or abbreviations or or worrying about the payload size because this document never gets transmitted. Uh, so it's it's uh, yeah, the, the the property names may be a little verbose, but it's intended trying to be very freestanding and and understandable to humans. Uh, but the fact that this is still a machine readable doc means that we can take that take that document and use tools to then both validate the profile itself, but also test against implementations to see does that uh, implementation meet the profile. And I'll certainly talk about that. 
So uh, the, the one thing uh, that, that gets folks confused, and as I said, to asking you know, what version of Redfish do you support is a real common question, and that kind of just comes from, from you know, all previous specs and, and just generally you know, uh, you know, the computer industry as a whole. It's always about what the next version is. Uh, so there are two, when we talk about versioning in the profile, there's, there's two places this shows up. Uh, the first is your profile itself can ha will have a version uh, because obviously, as we know, as, as, as mistakes are found and corrections made or, uh, you know, or additions uh, you know, over time you know, to these documents, we need to make sure that we're, we're all talking about the same documents. So there's versioning support for the profile. Now, the caution here is that we put the, profile, we put the versioning in the profile, but it is not something that we really want people to use in the in the normal manner of a of a compatibility or a, or a, you know an enhancement uh, 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 you know uh, progression, uh, we don't want folks to have a profile and then have to ask the next question like oh what version of that profile do you support oh I support version 1.3 oh no I support 1.7 I support 2.4 it, that's going to make that more confusing to end users because we really wanted to give them that simple answer I support the OCP basic server profile check done. Uh, so my retina, and this is no requirement, but this is my guidance to folks is if you are going to create another profile, say I've got my server profile this year, next year I want to make another one, don't make a revision of that profile, at least don't do a minor rev either, come up with a new name, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can kind of follow the software industries, you know, profile 2018, profile 2019, we can do that sort of thing. This is, uh, this is all kind of under discussion, I think this is up to the individual uh, you know, the individual uh, organizations making these profiles. But I would encourage folks to just give it a new name so that the, the customers and we have just basically one thing to talk about. So you can say, you know, the, hey, I support the, you know, the server 2020, you know, whatever. Uh, but anyway, just, just a guidance trying not to get this into a, a continuous battle of, of having asked the next question to really get to the bottom of what it is that people support. Uh, and the other thing is we'd like to be able to just put this stuff easily on uh, product literature, you know, on customer, you know, RFQs saying, hey, I, you need to have the OCP profile or the OCP server profile. We don't want to have to get into all this versioning stuff. So just a caution on that. But we also are hoping that these profiles are fairly long lasting, that you build one, uh, give it a decent baseline, uh, and then maybe that can last for a few years before you say, I need to raise the bar again. So now the flip side of this is on the uh, schema side, this is the other part of the versioning is uh, the versioning of the schemas supported or the schemas required in the profile. That is very much you know, part of this, the profile document. Uh, and that level of support is important. And again, to describe what the implementation has uh, implemented uh, and versus what the schema supports. And so there's really sort of two pieces of this. Number one, I have to have the schema uh, new enough uh, to have the support for the latest properties, and then I have to have those properties marked, you know, as required in the profile to make sure that that, that those pieces get implemented. Uh, and so, just the uh, just as a reminder, the way that we have structured the uh, the Redfish uh, uh, versioning structure is a is a three is a three number dot separated. Uh, piece. So you've got major, minor, and errata. So major uh, indicates a, 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 a non-compatible change when you when you revise those. Uh, we hope that everything we do sticks at version one. We don't want to have to break anybody. So uh, so everything we have is at one point something today. The minor revs mean a, a backward compatible change. So basically enhancements and additions uh, to the individual schemas. Uh, in resources, and then errata just you know are the bug fixes, descriptions, clarifications, that kind of stuff. Okay, so the, like I said, the, the, the structure of the document is, is set up to look like uh, the Redfish resources as you would pull them off the wire and look at them in a browser uh, and trying to make it so a human could kind of go down this list like a checklist. Uh, and so the, the document is, is, is broken up into, sex, into different sections and those are all done as JSON, yeah, as embedded uh, JSON objects. So you have the resource requirements uh, and then an, an individual block for each of the, the different resources or schemas that, uh, that you have requirements uh, for. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a header at the top that just has some basic uh, you know, information, you know, your version, your name, your contact info. Uh, and then the protocol pieces, the things that are outside the, uh, that are part of the Redfish spec, but not really part of the data model. So there are some requirements you can place there. 
Uh, and then at the bottom we have, and, and, and obviously this is JSON, so it can really go in any order, but uh, at the bottom I have the, uh, we also have message registries uh, in Redfish, which are really the, what, the, what are, is the basis for uh, both error messages and for eventing. Uh, and so those registries can also be listed uh, as, as part of the profile spec. And let me get into the details here. So, uh, and so here's, uh, here's Jason, uh, and uh, this is actually taken directly from the OCP uh, baseline and the, and the preliminary server profile. Uh, so <clears throat> this data is all, is all real. Uh, so like I said, this is the, the, the first part of the document. This is the uh, protocol section. So you can see there's, uh, you know, the, the, the name of the profile, the profile's version, and so forth. Uh, the important pieces to put in here are your contact info. Make sure that someone has a way to, uh, that is reading this document to be able to provide feedback to you or to, to point out errors. Uh, that's uh, one of the that's one of the uh, critical pieces for any of this stuff to you know be able to, to shake your fist at somebody. Uh, the uh, the other piece that's uh, that's critical here uh, is certainly the way that OCP is is using the concepts uh, is this thing that says required profiles, and so this is a basically a pound and include. Uh, of another profile. So this keeps you from having to redo lots of work uh, and, and you basically just say, you know, in order to meet this profile, this is another one you need to include. So <clears throat> the, uh, the, val the validation tools will basically bring in all the requirements from the required profiles and fold those into your profile and basically make a superset out of both of those. Uh, now, and one important thing about this is that you cannot uh, relax requirements in your profile. So if there's a requirement, if there's a hard mandatory requirement uh, in, a in, the, in one of your included profiles, you can't turn those things and say, well, I, I know that says it's required, I'm just gonna make it recommended. Can't do that. You can only add to a profile. So if you're really, uh, if you find something of that nature that doesn't fit your, you know, your needs, then you, 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 you gotta start over. But, uh, but hopefully we won't have those kinds of issues because everybody knows that he structures uh, and, and, is, and is doing the layers you know, as appropriate. Uh, and as I said, the protocol piece here, those are things that are part of the Redfish spec but are not part of the data model. So this is things like our discovery, uh, the discovery protocol, uh, you know, whether there's a host interface, um, and there's a bunch more now uh, for things like uh, query parameter support for, for some of the more advanced operations and, and, and wire efficiencies. The, the bulk of the profile doc will be spent in the resource uh, area. Uh, and so here's an example, again, taken from the OCP uh, baseline profile. Uh, and so this is showing the requirements for the chassis resource. So the name of that section is the name of the resource. So you see it says chassis. Uh, and then there's the, basically the, the minimum version of that. So this says that you have to have at least, you know, chassis 1.0. Uh, and then gets into the property requirements that then show <clears throat> the, the requirements for each individual property, <clears throat> excuse me, within that schema. Um, so knowing that most folks that are trying to make a profile are just trying to make a set of requirements, we're not trying to get too fancy with these things, and it's really you know uh, trying to make the document as as crisp and as easy uh, to create as possible. Uh, so we did some defaults uh, in the definition, uh, and so uh, as a for instance, you see that everything is organized here by the property name. Uh, so the you know, like asset tag there, it says that this is a recommended property. Uh, and in fact, it says that there's a, both a read requirement and a write requirement. So obviously, the asset tag needs to be a, a would be a user-facing uh, value that they need to be able to edit. So, you know, if you're going to have it, you may, you better make it read-write. Uh, but you'll see things like chassis type, manufacturer model, serial number. Those have those are just a, you know empty JSON objects. The default for the profile document says that if you if you create an object in a, as a property and there's no further details, then that's just a simple requirement. So that's a that's that's basically saving you to have to do all this read requirement, write requirement that all have the mandatories and just making this document four pages long. So uh, so basically, you know, you can do that if you want if you need the clarity for your own sanity. Uh, but you know, once you get used to it, then just these one lines will will get you that basic check mark. So as I said within within so within the the property itself, there's there's some additional functionality then that you can explain, uh, you know, more details if it's if it's not just a simple check mark. It's like well, there's more to it than that. Uh, as a for instance, you can say well, this is an array property. So like for instance, this is for the temperatures. So this is a temperature sensor in the thermal uh, the thermal resource. 
uh, and in, in, uh, in previous OCP hardware requirement documents, uh, the document says that a server must have three temperature sensors. Uh, and in fact, it must have three sensors that, res that report specific, uh, uh, specific regions of the system. And so this is, this is showing how you model that requirement uh, in, in the Redfish profile. So, so you can see here there's a temperatures object, and then actually that object is a, is a complex piece, so there are properties uh, inside. And so in that you can see that there's a cel you know, reading Celsius, the physical context, and then some thresholds. Uh, and so what this requirement reads to is saying, hey, I, I need you to have at least a minimum of three of those sensors, uh, or, or that, that object. Uh, that the uh, that the physical context property uh, there's a comparison uh, capability here so that says I need to have all of the following values and then there's the list of values so that's saying you know I need to be able to go through that array and find all those values and then you'll then you'll meet that uh, specification uh, and then you can see the thresholds there are listed but those are only recommended so the, the reason that we created some of these initial profiles was to show the capabilities. And so if you look at, and I'll have all the links here for the documents, but if you look at the sample profile that's part of the, uh, the resource bundle for, uh, from the DMTF for, the, for prof the, the, all the profile support, uh, that sample profile has uh, an example of every one of these capabilities in terms of how to spec out uh, the, the various you know, uh, pieces uh, of the requirements. And my gosh, I'm actually running out of time. So uh, the, the one that I wanted to get to here was the conditional requirements. Uh, and this is, the, uh, this is the one that's the most complicated. Uh, the conditional requirements are a, a way to say, well, if you have this or if this condition is true, then you have to have these things. Uh, this comes into play a lot with, with, uh, with what we termed as if implemented. So I can't require you to have a fan right? Because if you are a liquid cooled system, you don't have any fans. So we certainly wouldn't want to have a liquid cooled system fail the OCP profiles for manageability because they don't have fans. That would be really bad. And we, what we, we also don't want to have is I don't want somebody to say, well, I have to have a fan. So I'm just going to put a dummy fan object in here with no readings and some fake data just to make the software happy that's not a good idea either. So we're really trying to get away from those kinds of things. And so there's, that's where these if, if implemented uh, requirements are there. And what that says is if you have a fan, then you have to have these things. So obviously I wanna see uh, you know, the, the fan speed and the type and the name and so on and so forth. So that's where that kind of stuff comes from. The, the particular case that's shown here for the conditional requirements is that because the Redfish model shares the definition of what a, a simple ethernet interface looks like, uh, that model gets used for both the, the management controller or the BMC's uh, inter, you know, ethernet interface, but also the host interfaces. So if this is a server, you obviously have several NICs in the system, but you also have one on the BMC. And those have different requirements from the, from the profiles perspective. Uh, so this is how you specify that, hey, if we're talking about the Ethernet interface attached to a manager or, or BMC, then I have a much larger set of requirements on you as a managed device. Then I, then I say that you, that in terms of manageability on the host uh, NICs. Um, the one that's the complicated one is the one I wanted to, to, to say that we have good news about, uh, and that's this subordinate to resource. And this, is, this was the hardest thing to model uh, because I have to be able to tell you, well, I'm talking about the, the like I said, the, I'm talking about the BMC's NIC, not the host NICs. And the way that you could do that in Redfish was to have to specify where that resource lived in the tree. But because the resources could, you know, the URIs were allowed to be anywhere, uh, I had to be able to describe that in terms of the relationships, you know, from the resources uh, above it. Uh, and, that, and that's, that's unfortunate when I was defining the profiles like the, this is the only way to do this that, that will survive across vendors. So the good news is that with the, the, the version 1.6 of Redfish uh, spec that came out last summer, we added the open API support. And part of that support required us to go lock down the URI patterns for all for the entire resource tree. Uh, so that means that now I can now specify a URI pattern in the in the specification, uh, and so I know where the manager NICs are versus the host NICs. And so in the version of the profile specification that was approved by the board and is published yesterday, 
Uh, I don't. I checked this morning. It's not up on the site today, but it, or it's not up there yet. But it will be by the close of business today. So the 1.1 version of the profile spec, which is not shown here, has a new uh, new conditional uh, uh, conditional requirement uh, method that just is, says URI pattern. So you can now instead of doing these these trees of chasing the resources through the through the tree, you can just say, you know what, if the if the if the URI is at slash managers or slash systems you know, et cetera, et cetera, then these requirements apply. So it makes this a lot simpler than, than what is shown here. The only caveat to that is that in order to, to make those types of requirements, you will be specifying a Redfish version of 1.6 because that's the version of the specification that guarantees those URI patterns. For a looking forward profile, you know, for all new implementations, I don't think that's an issue. If you're trying to make this something that would apply to existing uh, systems in the field, probably need to avoid that for now. Yeah, so this is more, uh, more, more uh, 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 choices and uh, options available in the, uh, at the property in these conditional, uh, conditional requirements. Uh, this is one where we have a, uh, uh, a requirement that's looking at uh, another property. So, uh, this is allowing some simple comparisons to say, you know what, for this class of system, and this is again trying to make the profile very flexible so that you don't have to create a different profile for a hundred, you know, a hundred different profiles to cover, uh, you know, this this uh, this product space, uh, but try to make some that are, have some flexibility in it. And so in this case, we have like, well, look, I want an indicator LED. I want you to be able to have the blinky light to be able to find the unit in the data center. Uh, but I don't need that to apply if this is a virtual system. So that's how we do this in the profile, say, okay, look, uh, you know, look to see at, at the other property called system type within that resource. And if that system type is a physical or a composed system, then this is a then this is a required uh, uh, required property, you know. But it's otherwise it started with a recommended. <clears throat> and again, these these can get fairly complicated, uh, and so the best thing to do is to look at the samples to be able to see kind of how these arrange. All right, I'm going to get through real quick here because I want to get to the tools parts of this. Uh, I, one of the more uh, most uh, uh, important parts of the of the manageability specs are to be able to actually you know affect change and do configuration, and yeah, you know, as as a lot of that is just done with simple write, uh, simple patch uh, operations. But uh, in in Redfish, we also have a thing called an action, and so for more complex operations, which unfortunately means things like rebooting the system and uh, you know, affecting boot. Uh, boot parameters and so forth uh, requires a little something a little more complex, and so you can also put requirements on those actions. Uh, and that's here, for instance, the the reboot or sorry reset, uh, and that has you know the list of of types of reset that must be supported in the in in the product. Uh, I will say that this is the kind of thing this is in the profile mostly to get into your documentation and your checklists uh, for implementation, but this is not necessarily something that the that the validators and the test tools will be able to look at because the test tools are not gonna do any actual changes to the systems under test. So they're not gonna be trying to, to see, well, can I reboot the system? Can I erase the drives? Can I, you know, the, it's not gonna do those sorts of things. So this is really for, uh, really for the developer and the documentation. Uh, and yep, same thing for, for registries. Uh, this is not something that the, that the tools can test, but, uh, but as we have, as the DMTF is starting to create more uh, more registries that have more common error messages than event messages, uh, you, we'll be able to specify those as well in the profile. And again, this will really be for developer documentations. The, 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 uh, the test tools won't be able to, to validate this. <clears throat> so the, 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 the tools uh, and the, the uh, specifications that all back this up, so there's, there are two, uh, two pieces of this from the DMTF. The first is the, the profile specification, and that's what describes that JSON document. Uh, and that's available the D, uh, from, from the DMTF site. That's a document uh, DSP 272. Uh, and then the other uh, download is a bundle, uh, and that's called the DSP 8013. And so that's a zip file that has uh, a, the schema that, is, that describes the profile. Uh, the, the same document, uh, and then has that has the that sample uh, profile in it, uh, and then in the future, uh, any uh, published 
uh, uh, profile that is, that is either produced by the DMTF or has been received and, 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 and provided for republication uh, will be placed in that bundle. So all the profiles that we know about or have been given to us, we will republish that. And so I want to talk to that here in a second. Uh, so uh, lastly here though is the, the tools that can help you, you know, both create and use and then uh, and actually uh, 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 take advantage of the profiles. Uh, so a couple steps to this. So number one is you have to be able to create a profile. So there is a, uh, it, like I said, it's just a JSON document, but we wrote a JSON schema uh, that describes that document. So if you just, you know, open your favorite text editor and create the JSON document, uh, but you can take any of the available uh, JSON schema uh, validators uh, and use that to check your profile to make sure it matches the profile document that, that we've been talking about. Uh, so the, there's, a, there's one online at jsonschemavalidator.net that works really well. Uh, it'll tell you what's wrong and highlight the stuff for you so that's, that's, it's very handy. Um, once you have a valid profile document, then the, uh, the DMTF has an open source tool called the Profile Interop Validator. And what that will do is it will take your profile document uh, ingest that, and then you, you know, point the tool at a system uh, under test, give it, you know, give it the IP address and the credentials, and it will go crawl the resource tree on Redfish and verify that everything in that system uh, has, uh, matches the profile. Uh, and it will produce a report for you to say, you know, did it, you know, did it have everything in their profile, and if not, here's what was different or what was missing and so forth. So that's intended to be both tools for developers to basically make sure that they meet the profile, but this is also then for end customers to say, you know, does that product meet, you know, does it meet what the advertised uh, support says? So again, this is all the checks and balances for us to have that common ground to say, uh, you know, from, both from a user perspective and from a client software, uh, uh, you know, needs, you know, do, is the amount of support there what, what is expected. Uh, and then lastly, the, uh, the last tool is a documentation generator that will take uh, both the, the, all of the existing Redfish schemas and will take your profile document and will basically do a mail merge on all that and produce a, uh, an HTML file uh, that is, you know, basically shows all of the resources and all the properties that are listed in your profile document along with all of your uh, along with your requirements and any of the purpose text that you have added there to explain, uh, the, you know, wh why these things are in the profile. Um, <clears throat> in fact, you can go beyond that, and that that mail merge also takes a, a supplemental text file. Uh, so you can actually write a specification for you know your product, and we're encouraging the OCP folks that are writing profiles. You know what? You can go ahead and write the whole profile uh, specification or the hardware management specification uh, in that supplemental doc, and then just pull in all these profile uh, pieces, and it will just do all that for you. So, uh, makes makes making these tables and those checklists makes it a lot easier than doing by hand. And again, that's on that's also on GitHub. So, call to action here is uh, you know please take a look at the at the profile pieces the. The, uh, the, the one already released at, at version one from the, the OCP's uh, base, uh, was it just called base, baseline manageability? Uh, the baseline profile, uh, and then the individual groups, please start building those profiles on top of that baseline. Uh, and, and what I would encourage folks to do is get those, get those completed, get them uh, approved and submitted to the uh, incubation committee. Uh, and then once they're approved, please ask uh, the incubation committee, John, uh, to, to please have him take that from his right hand and hand it to his left hand as the, uh, as the alliance partnership uh, uh, you know, guy in the uh, DMTF. And I, as I said, if, we can, if you will submit those profiles to the DMTF for republication, this is not, this is not a donation, it is just a, a, a right to republish. Uh, and then the DMTF, when we release these, uh, these, uh, uh, these zip file bundles will include those, you know, anything that we've received and put those into that bundle so that uh, basically it becomes a one-stop shop for, for anyone looking for all Redfish profiles and that's an easy way for them to, to, to get them. And, and obviously, uh, you know, if they didn't know about the OCP work, that's an easy way for them to discover it, uh, you know, accidentally. So. Uh, and, the end, and lastly, please uh, please test <laughs> test your products against those profiles because that's the uh, that's the check mark that we want folks to be able to use both on their product literature and in their uh, and then in their RFQs. So, and with that, uh, are there any questions? They're all asleep. Yeah, sir. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes. Right. So my question is, if we say, okay, the menu element is very specific to not just one issue, like optional, mm-hmm. what type of updates do you expect to that people that like the name change, the name the final version? Yeah, if, if we actually publish this, it's, the question was about, you know, this one says this is an IPv4 address required here, but what if in the future we don't want IPv4, we only want IPv6? And what kind of change would that would that be? Yeah, and so the answer is this is listed that IPv4 address is misses a mandatory requirement with a minimum count of one. So that is saying this device must have uh, a, at least one IPv4 address. Uh, and so if you wanted to change that later to say, you know, now it's a you know make that IPv6 requ- uh, requirement with no IPv4, that would actually be a breaking change. So that would be a version two of that profile because it would not be compatible with the old version. So and that's, that would be okay. And again, I, so I, would, I would recommend at that point you make a new profile to say, hey, this is, the, you know, this is a little more forward-looking one. Uh, I will say this, 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 this is in the spec today, uh, and that is actually the requirement under the manager. Uh, and so you know, at, least, at least as we've discussed it, uh, this particular case is a good example. Uh, we, we do think that probably IPv4 on the management network are probably going to be around for a long time. But, but yes, but you're right, that would make a breaking change. So the, but the reason we put it as required is like to make sure that people had the, had the configuration and had that ability in the profile itself. So, okay. But yes, so, that's a good point. So with that, I'd like to thank you because we are at the bottom of the hour. And I, I know that there's a uh, set of keynotes at the top of the hour, so I want to give the entire 30 minutes to uh, uh, Bradley Bishop. So I need to have time for him to get up here. So. All right, thank you, Ron. Thank you.